2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 says he has saved us and called us to a holy life. What kind of life? Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Because of his what? Purpose and this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Go ahead and give your neighbor a high five, thumbs up, or a smile, and you can be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise home. Hey. This morning, I would like to speak a message that I believe the Lord has placed upon my heart entitled Created, Redeemed, and Called. Created, Redeemed, and Called. So how many know God created us? Amen. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, so God created man in his own image, the image and likeness of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. So isn't it, to, isn't it cool to know that you and I have been created by God? Not just an average God, but we've been created by an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present God. Come on, somebody. The Alpha and the Omega. The great I am. You can find that in Exodus 3.14. See, we don't serve a created God, but our God created us. In this world today, you find many people serving created gods. Mm. Should I say it again? In this world today, you find many people serving a created God. But the God we serve created us. <laughs> the Bible says in Psalms 139, verse 13 through 16, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. My goodness. We are not an accident. We are not a oops. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we, we are not a I wish I never had you. But we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on and clap for the Lord right there. God created you and I for a purpose. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. So number one, we are created. Uh -huh. Now there is a challenge because God created us for his purpose. But the fall of man separated us from God. It put a spiritual wall of separation between man and God. So the good news is that you and I can have that relationship redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So the second point is God has redeemed us by his blood. Uh, I looked up the word redeem and it said compensate for the faults or bad aspects of. It also said gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. Mm. Now the word redeemed says, is there a phone? Is it up here? Oh, the call of God. <laughs> Created, redeemed, and called. <laughs> So the word redeemed, having been paid, recovered, bought back, or exchanged for money or other goods. In Christianity, having been saved or delivered from sin or its consequences. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, it says, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed. 
from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. Somebody say redeemed. But with the precious blood of Jesus, mm, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So even though the fall separated us from God, we can have that relationship restored by the blood of the lamb. That's a good place to shout. The fall of man separated us from God. But God offers redemption through the blood of Jesus. God wants to have a relationship with us so we can carry out his purpose for our lives. Did you catch that? God wants to have a relationship with us so we can carry out his purpose for our lives. Uh -huh. 1 Timothy 1.9 gives us a good understanding of why God saved us. He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the time began. Uh huh. I, I, I like to uh, I like I like the fact that purpose and grace are in the same sentence here. Let's read it again. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the time began. So I like the fact that we got purpose and grace. Say it with me. Purpose and grace. See, God saved us for his purpose by his grace. Uh, see, see. <laughs> I know that wasn't too deep, but I'm going to say it again. God saved us for his purpose by his grace. Mm -hmm. God redeemed us for his purpose by his blood. God has called us for his purpose by his grace. And that takes me to my next point. God has a calling on each and every one of our lives. So number one, say created. Number two, say redeemed. And number three, say called. Tell your neighbor, you are called. Jeremiah 1.5 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. See, God has always had a purpose for our lives. Even before we were born. Huh. But sin separated us from being able to fulfill that purpose. But now that you and I have been redeemed, we can fulfill the purpose. Sin separated us from being able to fulfill the purpose. But now that you and I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, there's an old school song that says, I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. What, what something, something, the great I am. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb or something like that. Uh-huh. No, you can't get to heaven. Dun, dun, dun. In roller skates. Dun, 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 dun. No, you can't get to heaven. In roller skates. No, you can't get to heaven in roller skates. You'll roll right past those pearly gates. <laughs> uh, that's the old school one there. <laughs> I've been redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. Now that you and I have been redeemed, we can fulfill that purpose. Not only did God create us, not only did God redeem us, but he has also called us. So do me a favor. Tell your neighbor one more time, you are called. It feels good to be called and chosen. Can I hear an amen? I don't know how it works, but I remember when I was growing up, if you wanted to play sports during lunch, you'd have to pick your team. Like if you want to play soccer, everybody lines up, and then you pick who you want on your team. But what we used to do is during lunch, we would play basketball, and the one who made the first free throw was get to, get to choose, right? So then who, the first two guys make the free throw, then everybody else lines up. 
And then this guy will say, okay, I'll take him. The other guy, I'll say, I'll take him. The other guy says, okay, I'm going to take And usually they go for the tallest guys when you're playing basketball, right? So that tells you where I was at. <laughs> so, then <laughs> so then you get to the next one, I'll take him. The next one's, okay, I'll take him. Now, now you're down to the last five guys, and you only could pick four more. I guess I'll take him. And I, by the time it gets to the last one, okay, I'm going to take you. Then I'll take you. And then there's someone that just don't get the play. <laughs> and you have to say, okay, I'll got next. But doesn't it feel good to be chosen? <laughs> doesn't it feel good to say, okay, I'll take him? See, God chose us, even though the world might have looked beyond us. Even though the world might have passed by us. Even though the world might have said, no, I don't choose you. But God has chosen us. God has called us. And God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. Come on and clap for the Lord this morning. It feels good to know that we are chosen. Now, here is the cool thing. God has given you and I gifts to carry out that calling. He's called us and he's given us the gifts to carry it out. This is good stuff. I feel like preaching right now. Can I preach just a little bit? Uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter 4.10, each of you, how many is each? That means everybody. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. There's that word again. Chanada. Grace. There it is again. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. You and I should be willing to use whatever gift God has given us to serve people and make an impact on a hurting world. Because we've been created, we've been redeemed, and we've been called. I'm going to say it again. We've been created, we've been redeemed, and we've been called. Uh, we've been created, we've been redeemed, and we've been called. We've been created, we slipped up a little bit, we've been redeemed, and we've been called. Can I get a church to help me out this morning? We've been created, we've been redeemed, and we have been called. I'm going to say it one more time. We've been created. We've been redeemed, and we've been called. You don't have to sit on the sidelines. You don't have to worry if you can, or not if you can get in the game or not. You've been created, you've been redeemed, and you've been called. We've been created. We slipped up a little bit. God sent his only son to redeem us, and he called us. So not only are we just called to be in the church and be redeemed, but we've been called to put in work for the honor and glory of Jesus. You and I should be willing to use whatever gifts that God has given us to serve people and make an impact on a hurting world. You and I should be willing to use whatever gift as God has given us to model God's grace in its various forms. Uh, let me say it again. You and I should be willing to use whatever gift God has given us to model God's grace in its various forms. Uh, and let me share with you, and I'm a, I've shared it before, but I'm going to say it again. I would like to share it again with you that we've been created, we've been redeemed, and we've been called. I want to share something with you. As you and I pursue the call of God and use our giftings, we become a model of God's grace. As you and I use our giftings and our talents, we become a model of God's grace. Do you know how powerful that is? We become a model of God's grace. Paul even talks about it. In 1 Corinthians 15, 10, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. We sang it about it earlier. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Paul is saying the grace that God placed upon my life was not in vain because I put in work for the Lord. 
Let me say it again. Paul is saying the grace that God placed upon my life was not in vain because I put in work for the Lord. The David Guzik commentary put it like this. God directed his gracious work toward us when we only existed as a fact in God's knowledge. Just as a couple lovingly plans for a baby before the baby is born, so God planned for us. The only way that Paul was able to do this work was because of the grace of God. It is important to know that grace was not given to us because of our works. Grace was not given to us because our works deserved it. But we have been given grace so we can carry out the work. I'm going to say it again. Grace was not given to us because our works deserved it. But we have been given grace so we can carry out the work. It is important to know that grace was not given to us by anything we've done. But we have been given that grace to put in work for the Lord. You and I can carry out the call of God upon our lives through the grace of God. Paul is saying God gave me grace to carry out his work, and that grace wasn't in vain because I put in work for the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Corinthian church was also challenged not to receive the grace of God in vain. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. We then, workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Wouldn't it be a bummer to have the grace of God upon our lives and choose not to model it? God has placed grace upon our lives so we can model it. Tell somebody, I'm a model. <laughs> Feels good. Huh? Tell your other neighbor, I'm a model. <laughs> God has called you and I for a purpose. And I just stopped by to encourage us this morning to pursue that call and be a model of God's grace. How can we be a model? Well, as we step out and pursue God's call upon our life, we can model God's grace through our life. We shouldn't receive grace and kick back with it in a corner. We shouldn't receive grace and sit back in the corner with it. We should be willing to model God's grace by pursuing his call upon our lives and putting in work by using our talents and gifts. The best way I can explain it to you is about being a model of God's grace is to use an illustration that I think I've used before, but I got to use it because I, I, wanna, I want you to get the point of what I'm trying to say, and then I'll come in for a landing. It's like when you and I go to Markham's, they have models. Am I right about it? When you go to Canal Walk, the stores, they got models. These models stand in front of the store to show you how the clothes will look on you. And check it out. They're not all standing the same way. Right? I'm going to show you. Right? <laughs> he said show it, so I'm going to show it. They're not all standing the same way. Some are standing like this. Some are standing like this. Some are standing like that. Some are standing like that. Some are standing with this suit. Some are standing with that suit. And if you notice, none of the models have the same suits on. <laughs> none of the models have the same clothes as the model next to them. One has this outfit. One has that outfit. One has this suit. Another has that suit. Well, so it is with you and me. We have all been given different gifts that we can use for the honor and glory of God. When we use our gifts... We can model God's grace in its various forms. Mm. It is only by the grace of God that you and I can be used for the glory of God. So when you and I step out and begin to use our gifts, we are modeling the grace of God in that form. 
We, like Paul, say, if it wasn't for God's grace, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing for the Lord. So tell your neighbor you are a model. See, do me a favor. Tell the person behind you, I'm a model. Tell the one in front of you, I'm a model. Uh, look down your whole row and tell them I'm a model. Matter of fact, stand up on, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> stand up on your feet and shout, I'm a model. Huh? When you go and you, <laughs> when you go to Markham's, everybody's standing different. Everybody got a different form, but they're modeling some clothes. You, I, you and I are a model of God's grace. You and I are a model of God's grace. You may be modeling God's grace in the form of singing. You may be modeling God's grace in the form of teaching. You may be modeling God's grace in the form of running a business. You may be modeling God's grace at home. You may be modeling God's grace at work. I don't know, but whatever you do, you are modeling God's grace. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, we wouldn't be able to sing, wouldn't be able to preach, wouldn't be able to be in the house of the Lord. You wouldn't have that business. You wouldn't have that family. I wish I had a little bit of help up in here. But when you step out and allow God to use you, you're a model. Come on, slap your neighbor on the shoulder and tell him I'm a model. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 You've got a gift. You've got a talent. You've got a call. I dare you to step out and begin to use it for the honor and glory. I know you like to shout real loud. I know we dance good. I know we amen the preacher. But where's those gifts and talents that you got on the inside of you to make an impact on a hurting world for the honor and glory? What you're waiting on? The harvest is ripe. The fields are ready for harvest. Do you got a song in you? Do you got a book in you? Do you got a movie in you? Do you got a skit in you? Do you got a business in you. I don't know who I'm talking to today. It's time to model God's grace. God didn't just give us the suit so we can put it in the closet. God didn't just give us grace so we can sit in the church. I wish I had a little bit of help up in here. God didn't give us grace so we can just amen the preacher. I'm talking to some world shakers, history makers, mountain movers, trailblazers for the honor and glory of Jesus. Come on and give the Lord a good shout this morning. Come on, give him a good shout. Hallelujah. 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 Paul says, God's grace wasn't given to me in vain. I put in work. I put in work. I, I like to hear all the testimonials. Before I got saved, I was radical. I was sold out. I was this and I was that. But now your testimony starts after you come into the house of the Lord. That same radicalness we had in the world, are we willing to use it for the honor and glory of God? Are we willing to step out and do something different for God? Are we? I wish I may come down here a little bit. Are we willing to step out and be a world shaker for God? Are we willing to step out and be radical for Jesus? Are we willing to step out and make an impact? Be a model. Be a model of God's grace. Is there anybody in the house that wants to make an impact for the honor and glory of Jesus? I know you did a lot of things in the world. I know, I know, but I want to find if there's anybody that's willing to put in work for the Lord, willing to put in work for God. Write that book, write that movie, start that life group, rise up. I don't know who, hey. Hey, when you sing, you're modeling God's grace. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, you know, nobody has to tell you. You know, if it wasn't for God's grace, you couldn't even grab the mic. Nobody would even trust you with the mic because the mic might disappear and end up in the pawn shop. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But is there anybody in the house? Hey. <laughs> 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 
When we're teaching, we're modeling God's grace. When you run that business, we're modeling God's grace. When you go home and you be that mother or that father, you're modeling God's grace. When you go to work and you're able to keep a job, you're modeling. Next time you go to work, I want you to walk in like you're a model. I want you to walk in like you're a model, but not of the latest clothes, of the grace of God. Because if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't even have that job. You can model God at that universe. You can model God's grace at that university. Do me a favor. Start working on your walk. Because when you get that degree, I want you to walk across the stage like you a model. So you might as well start practicing now. I know you're barely in your second year, and you got two more years to go. You better start walking, working on that walk. Because when you walk across the stage, you are a model of God's grace when they call your name for that degree I want you to model like it's God's grace upon your life who am I talking to is anybody in the house thankful for the grace of God we've been called by the grace of God we were created we've been redeemed and we are called I want you to stand to your feet and give the Lord a praise if you're grateful, if you're thankful. Think about all he's done for you. Think about how he brought you out. I want you to give him about 10 seconds of a grateful praise. Give him five seconds of a dark bar praise. You got three seconds left. I know some of you think you did it on your own. I know some of you think it was your intellect, but I came to talk to those that are grateful for the grace of God, that are thankful that he picked you up, he turned you around, set your feet upon solid ground. I only got 10 minutes. Have a seat. Have a seat. Mm. We are simply modeling that if it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. But thank God for his grace. We were created. We've been redeemed. And we've been called. That's why we can sing. That's why we can run a business. That's why we can be a father. That's why we can do what we do. It's by the grace of God. Grace was not given because our works deserved it. But we've been given grace so we can put in work. And this morning, I would like to encourage someone to step out and begin to use your talents and your gifts for the Lord. There are many places that we can use our talents and gifts, but this morning I just want to focus on a few of them in the house of the Lord. They don't all have to be in the house of the Lord, but there are a few places I would like to encourage someone. Maybe you've been saved for a year or, or two years or maybe six months or maybe a month. It's time to get involved and be a steward of your talents. It would be nice to see some new faces in some of the areas of ministry we have. Uh huh. It was great to see new faces up here this morning on the worship team. It was good. It's great to see new faces in the sound. Got Brother Walter right there putting in work for the Lord. It's good to see new faces. It's good to see. It's good to see new faces. But there's some other ministries that you can get involved in. We got children's ministry. We got the ushers ministry. We got sound. We got music. We got Vetti. You know, it'd be cool is to see some new Vetti students. Okay, I got a yaw and a yake. I got no claps. Thank you. Thank you. It would be good to see some new Vetti students. Oh, I want to make an impact. I, I want to <laughs> reach the world. But we can, never mind, let me just stay focused. It, 
<laughs> It'd be good to see some new faces in the administration, in the campus. What is your passion? What is the gift that God has given you? When people show up, you're modeling God's grace in that area. Let's pursue God's call upon our lives and be a model of God's grace so we can make an impact on a hurting world. And I just want to give an illustration to you, then I'll get ready to wrap it up. Um, it says this. It's from Juan Carlos Ortiz. Now, you guys ever seen those people that walk in the wire with the thing, the trapeze, I think they're called, or something, something like that, right? Okay. Watch, he says this. He says, watching a trapeze show is breathtaking. We wonder at the dexterity and timing. We gasp at near misses. You know, they, then sometimes they catch each other and they swing, right? And trips and they catch them. It says, in most cases, there is a net underneath. When they fall, they jump up and bounce back to the trapeze. In Christ, we live on the trapeze. The whole world should be able to watch and say, look how they live. How they love one another. Look how well the husbands treat their wives and aren't they the best workers in the factories and offices, the best neighbors, the best students. This is to live on the trapeze, being a show to the world. What happens when we slip? The net is surely there. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ has provided forgiveness for all our trespasses. Both the net and the ability to stay on the trapeze are works of God's grace. Of course, we cannot continually sleep on the net. If that is the case, I doubt whether that person is a trapezist. Mm. Here's the bottom line. God provides the grace. We do the work. We slip up. We got grace to catch us. Amen. Then the challenge is to bounce back up and get on the trapeze and keep putting in work again. You slip up, poof, we got grace to catch us. If you slip up, you bounce back up on the trapeze again. I came for the one this morning that finds yourself on the net. I want to encourage you, bounce back up. Bounce back up. Bounce back up. The Bible says a righteous man may fall seven times, but he rises again. Wake up, child. It's your time to shine. You've been called for such a time as this. Wake up, child. It's your time to shine. You've been called for such a time as this. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. I pray for the one, God, that needs a comeback this morning. And I pray for the one that's been challenged to use their talents and their gifts. I pray that you will give us a fresh fire, God. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for redeeming us. And thank you for calling us. And God, I, I, I pray that you would minister to hearts this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. I want everybody to go ahead and stand. Worship team, you could come on up. I want to do something real quick. I want to do something. There's two people that I want to pray for this morning. As I was preparing this message, I had one group of people in mind that I wanted to go for. And that's the new person. Maybe you've been saved for a year or two years. I didn't come for the whole church this morning, but I came for the one that's new, but you're not involved yet. That's who I mean. That's, that's who this message is for. I was thinking as I was putting it together, we got university students. We got college students. We have a lot of young adults. We have a lot of new people in our church. And the challenge that I have for you this morning is to get involved, to be a good steward of the giftings that God has given you. There's room for you. I said, there's room for you. Connect with one of the leaders. Say, hey, I want to get involved. I want to begin to use my talents and my gifts because I don't want to be one that has grace and not model it. I don't want to be one that has a new suit, but I just keep it in the closet. I want to model it. I don't want to be one that got saved and just sat in the church. I want to be one that makes an impact. And if that's you, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, and then if that's you, I want to pray for you. The, uh, the second group that God just dropped upon my heart right now is the ones that you were involved, but somehow you're not using your gifts, you're not using your talents. You find yourself on the net of grace, just chilling. It's time to get back on the trapeze and put in work for the Lord. Father, we love you, we bless you. I pray that you would minister by your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and sing this song, God, and then we're going to get ready to open up the altars. This morning, if you're here this morning, and you're new, and you're not really involved, I want to encourage you to get involved and, and make an altar call to say, God, I want to be available to you. Maybe you've been coming for a year, maybe two years, maybe six months, and you say, man, that's me, Pastor Dre. I want to get connected. I want to get involved. If that's you, then I want you to come. Or maybe at one time you were sold out for God. You were on fire for the Lord. But now you've kind of just put your giftings on the shelf, put your talent on the shelf. Yeah, you come to church, but that fire that you used to have is not there. You say, God, I want you to renew my fire this morning. If that's you, then we're going to sing this song from the top. And if that's you, I want you to come. I want you to come as we sing it out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it. Let him break you. Let him break you. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. I pray that you would move by your power. Raise up laborers in your harvest field. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Dre. We hope this message has been a blessing to you and encourages you to grow in your walk with the Lord. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to give to Victory Outreach Church of Cape Town, there's a link in the description. You can go ahead and click that link and it will take you directly to our giving page. I want to encourage you also to follow us on our social media platforms. You can also stop by our website to get more messages at www.vocapetown.net. God bless you.